It has been two years since the launch of the last interplanetary starship mission, what is now being called Elon Musk's Spruce Goose, and this was the last attempt, at least as far as SpaceX was concerned, for Starship to actually make a successful landing on the Martian surface. For nearly a decade, SpaceX had been trying in vain to set down on the surface of the planet that has defied all efforts to land on it for a considerable period of time simply because of the nature of the Martian atmosphere. Given the fact that it is less than 1% as dense as our atmosphere, terminal velocity for a vehicle attempting to land on Mars is nearly a thousand kilometers per hour, or five times that of a vehicle attempting to land on Earth as you're watching right now. As a result, every attempt to land on Mars over the last decade has ended in failure. SpaceX, driven on by Elon Musk's dogged determination, made an attempt faithfully every two years, sending two starships with every attempt, hoping to learn from the first failure and then successfully land on the second attempt. However, every single time, it simply ended in disaster, and these attempts were extremely complicated given the fact that they also required at least 10 refueling launches per starship, which means every attempt required 22 starship launches at a considerable cost to SpaceX. The pressure on Elon Musk began to ramp up with every failure, and then finally, 18 months ago, Starship managed to successfully set down on the Martian surface. The celebration had only just begun in SpaceX mission control when suddenly the regolith gave way beneath one of the landing legs and the vehicle exploded. At that moment, we have conflicting reports as to what happened, but the end result is that Elon Musk was checked in to a high-end psychiatric facility in Austin, Texas, and has never emerged. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. We are going to be visiting a topic that I've been talking about a little bit lately, but really haven't been discussing much over the last couple of years because Falcon Heavy, frankly, hasn't been flying very much. But in my opinion, it really needs to be re-embraced by SpaceX along with Red Dragon in order to complete Elon Musk's ambitions of going to Mars. And why is this the case? I mean, he gave up on Falcon Heavy and Red Dragon a long time ago. All the emphasis is on Starship right now. Well, before I explain, I want to remind all of you guys that I've uh, added 2,100 subscribers over the last week. You guys have really been coming through for me lately. Thank you so much. We are almost on the home stretch to 100K. Deeply, deeply Deeply appreciate that. And if you haven't subscribed, then please subscribe. Okay, let's move on. So, yeah, Starship, of course, is the solution for exploring the solar system. Nobody has denied that, but there are reasons why Falcon Heavy can still do jobs that Starship may have a hard time doing. 
And one of the biggest challenges, as I have mentioned a number of times in the past, is the whole landing on Mars thing. Starship is really going to experience a tremendous problem in trying to undertake this Herculean effort to land on the surface of Mars. Mars has claimed a wide variety of probes that are, of course, much, much lighter than Starship is simply because of the nature of the atmosphere. It is so difficult to slow down anything entering the Martian atmosphere because of the density and the enormous terminal velocity. First, you have to survive the inferno of entering the atmosphere, and then you have to survive the suicidal plunge towards the surface. And by the way, yes, SpaceX has talked about refueling missions, the only five or six of them being necessary to get to Mars, but really they're going to need at least 10 unless tanker starships can carry up a substantial amount of fuel, extra fuel beyond the 100 tons that we're thinking now. Because if you only partially fill up a starship, as we have learned with liquid natural gas tankers, that liquid tends to slosh around in the tanks, which would really add to the instability of the craft. So the more you can fill it up, the more stable it's going to be. So in my opinion, they're going to need a fully fueled starship, not only because of stability, but also because I think they're going to need all the fuel they can get to land on the surface of Mars and to decelerate from that suicidal plunge through the atmosphere, but there are other matters to consider as well. Now, you know, it's possible that uh, Starship may be able to take off every single day or several times a day to carry out these refueling missions, but we can't be certain about that. I mean, obviously, we're a long ways away from LEO refueling, and who knows, you know, how effective that's going to be. And if you're having to undertake 10 to 12 refueling missions with every Starship launch, that's a lot of launches just to get a couple of Starships all the way to Mars. And then, of course, you know, the whole thing may end in disaster. And unlike all of SpaceX's previous efforts, you can't try again just a couple of days later or a month later or something. You have to wait another two damn years because of launch windows. So really, what I think SpaceX needs is a vehicle that's going to be able to set down reliably on the surface of the planet, something that is better set up for that purpose in order to prep a proper landing site for Starship. Let me explain. Now, first of all, let's have a look at Falcon Heavy's capabilities. In order to get the maximum amount of payload to Mars, you need to expend all three stages. Yeah, that's expensive, but you're only going to be doing this a few times in order to achieve your overall objective. It's capable of carrying 16.8 metric tons, at least according to SpaceX, all the way to Mars. That's a tremendous amount of mass. The mass of red Dragon, at least its initial concept, was less than 5 metric tons, it would need to carry an extra 1.8 metric tons in order to be able to carry out a propulsive landing on the surface of Mars, which means you'd have a lot of payload left for cargo. Now, the original concept was only to transport about 1 metric ton worth of cargo to the surface of Mars, which, by the way, is also the mass of the the entire Curiosity rover and the Perseverance, so it's still a substantial amount, certainly not for human transport, but at the same time, you're not looking to transport humans with Red Dragon, at least not at first. One of the things that you would use Red Dragon for is to set up a proper landing pad for Starship. It's going to be difficult as hell to set down on the surface of Mars given the conditions of the atmosphere alone, and then if you're setting down on Regolith as opposed to a proper landing pad, that's going to be even more difficult, especially for a very tall rocket with landing pads not very widely separated. It's sort of unstable, especially if it's setting down on an uneven surface. 
So like curiosity, Red Dragon would decelerate in the Martian atmosphere to a more manageable speed of about a thousand kilometers per hour or terminal velocity, and then use its Super Draco engines in order to land, which was the original plan. Once it actually sets down, then it deploys a number of vehicles specifically designed to build a landing pad by fusing the Martian regolith into a solid solid flat surface. These kinds of vehicles have been experimented with in the past and you're looking at some smaller scale versions of these kinds of vehicles built by the Maston Corporation which unfortunately has gone bankrupt but is still in existence under a different name. But in any event, this type of vehicle in a larger scale could build a solid and relatively flat landing pad on the surface of Mars is making a starship landing far more likely to succeed. It's also worth keeping in mind what Rad Dragon was designed to do in the first place, and that was to carry out scientific missions, most significant of which was to find deposits of water ice on the Martian surface. You could utilize Red Dragon to scout out the Martian surface to find appropriate landing sites that would contain all of the necessary resources you would need for a full fledged starship mission without having to waste a starship on that purpose. So that being the case, Red Dragon could be deployed by Falcon Heavy fairly soon actually to the Martian surface to begin the initial work for eventually setting down on Mars with a starship loaded with human beings. There's another potential purpose for Red Dragon as well. Instead of going through the process of trying to land on Mars, with a starship in the first place, which all of us know is going to be very difficult, you could instead use Red Dragon as sort of a landing craft, because it's capable of not only landing on the Martian surface, but also taking off as well. So in the midst of one of my brainstorming sessions in the shower, I came up with this idea. Why not a collaboration between Sierra Space and SpaceX? Already Sierra Space has come up with the idea of this kind of scout mission to head to Mars or to the moon or to other destinations. It utilizes its life inflatable module to provide a great deal of living space for a few astronauts, perhaps four to six, it also has ion engines powered by solar electric energy, although theoretically you could use some other type of propulsion. And instead of having its command module as depicted here, you would instead have a red dragon. That red dragon could then descend to the Martian surface once you arrived in Martian orbit with this, while you would have essentially a ready-made space station in orbit around Mars with the life module as the primary habitation space. The Red Dragon could descend down to the Martian surface with a couple astronauts in tow, carry out some scouting missions and other scientific tasks, and then return to the Sierra Nevada spacecraft. So you could have Red Dragon carry out a lot of the initial scouting missions necessary for eventual large-scale missions utilizing Starship with this kind of solution. Now, this entire ship could be deployed by one Starship or by two Falcon Heavies. So here's the advantage to this kind of solution. You can start scouting out the Martian surface and for that matter send a human mission to Mars without having to deal with all of that pesky LEO refueling. You don't have to master that process in order to send out a ship like this. Starship would still be incredibly important because it could easily deploy a ship like this in one launch and then once in, it's in low Earth orbit it starts making its way to the Red Planet with astronauts on board. And as I said, once it arrives there, you have a space station in orbit and the ability to land on the Martian surface, possibly more than once, with the long-term objective of scouting out a proper landing site for Starship. 
So here's my point. Falcon Heavy is not superfluous yet. It can actually serve a very important part in our initial efforts to try to colonize the Red Planet or at least send a human mission there. Think about how inexpensive this solution could be compared to a NASA-driven solution, for example, or waiting for Starship to get mastered and all the different complications involved with that. From LEO refueling to all of the difficulties of trying to land such a massive craft on the planet with such a thin atmosphere. Falcon Heavy and Red Dragon can serve a very useful purpose both in the short run and the long run, both in terms of setting up the initial logistics on Mars in order to make Starship a more effective craft, but on top of that, using Red Dragon as a landing craft for human beings. Even though Starship may prove to be effective and practical in the long run for cargo, I really don't think that the Starship suicide dive is ever going to have a high enough rate of success in order to be a safe way to put human beings on the surface of Mars, whereas Red Dragon definitely can. Smash that like. Oh, and also... Please subscribe and check out the description for various ways to support my content. And as always, stay angry about space.